Hello friends, I'm Mrs. Imagination, Angela Imagination. You can call me either one. <laughs> Today's picture book is one that you may have heard before. You may have heard it read by your parents or a teacher. It's pretty good, I really like it. And you know, it's sort of fun in a different kind of way. <laughs> You'll just have to wait to see what I'm talking about. But first, let's see what I have in my basket. I have three clues to this story and things that happen in this story. Oh, wow, clue number one is this pencil. Well, you write with a pencil. Um, this pencil doesn't have an eraser. It has, this doesn't look like a normal pencil. Hmm. Wow. What is this? I can get it out. It's a piece of paper. Let's open it. <gasps> Look! A map of the world. Do you think we're gonna be traveling? Do you think that our story's gonna take place in some special part of the world? Hmm, I have these questions was in our basket. <laughs> <coughs> Do you think somebody has a cough? <coughs> Maybe. We need to be careful when we're coughing. Maybe they have cold, sniffles, or allergies. All these things are clues to our story today. Let's dive right in and see what the title of our story is. Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I already have questions going on in my mind. It's by Judith B. Orst. She's the author. And Ray Cruz is the illustrator. He does all the pictures. But you know, I'm thinking, why in the world does it say that Alexander's day was terrible? Horrible, no good, and very bad. Why didn't they just say he had a bad day? I don't know, but it makes me wonder. What kinds of things make a day so bad that you call it terrible, horrible, very bad, no good, awful, stinky, yucky day? <sighs> Why don't we get right into reading it? Oh, I'm going to use my imagination in this story. I'm going to try to just imagine what I think Alexander's voice would sound like. Ready? I went to sleep with gum in my mouth. And now there's gum in my hair. And when I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard. And by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running. And I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in the breakfast cereal box. And Nick found a junior undercover agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box. But in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. I think I'll move to Australia. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window, too. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be car sick. No one even answered. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At school, Miss Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. At singing, 
She said I sang too loud. At counting time, she said I left out 16. Who needs 16? I could tell. It was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I could tell because Paul said I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said that Philip Parker was his best friend and that Albert Moyo was his next best friend and that I was only his third best friend. <laughs> I, I hope you sit on a tack, I said to Paul. I hope the next time you get a double-decker strawberry ice cream cone that the ice cream part falls off the cone part and lands in Australia. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag and Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds and Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly roll with sprinkles, little coconut sprinkles on the top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. That's what it was because at the dentist after school, Dr. Fields found a cavity just in me. Come back next week and I'll fix it, said Dr. Fields. Next week, I said, I'm going to Australia. On the way downstairs, the elevator door closed on my foot and while we were waiting for my mom to go get the car, Anthony made me fall where it was muddy. And then when I started crying because of the mud, Nick said I was a crybaby. And while I was punching Nick for saying crybaby, my mama came back and the, with the car and scolded me for being muddy and fighting. I am having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I told everybody, no one even answered. So then we went to the shoe store to buy some sneakers. Anthony chose white ones with blue stripes. Nick chose red ones with white stripes. I chose blue ones with red stripes, but then the shoe man said, we're all sold out. They made me buy plain old white ones, but they can't make me wear them. When we picked up my dad at his office, he said I couldn't play with his copy machine, but I forgot. He also said to watch out for the books on his desk, and I was careful as could be, except for my elbow. He also said don't fool around with his phone, but I think I called Australia. My dad said, please don't pick him up anymore. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. There were lima beans for dinner and I hate limas. There was kissing on TV and I hate kissing. My bath was too hot, I got soap in my eyes, my marble went down the drain and I had to wear my railroad train pajamas. I hate my railroad train pajamas. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow he said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out and bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony, not with me. 
It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says some days are like that. Even in Australia. Oh my, what a fun book in a not so fun sort of way. He did not have a fun day, did he? Let's look in our basket. Let's, let's get to our basket. Let's see. We had this pencil. Now, do you think you know, let me ask this question, do you think you know why this pencil was in here? Did you notice? I bet you did. Did you notice that the pictures in our story, in this picture book, were all in black and white as if they had been drawn with a pencil. Because you see, this pencil is actually a sketching pencil. It's a sketching pencil. Hmm, I bet that's right. Well, what about this map? This is a map of the world. Do you have an answer? Why was the, oh, wait. Yes, Alexander kept saying something about going to Australia. Here's Australia right here, and here is the United States. Wow, those are very far away from each other. And it makes me ask the question, if you were having a terrible, horrible, very, very bad, no good, I think I got those backwards, kind of day, where would you want to go? If you could imagine any place in the world to go that would make you feel better, where would that be? Well, let's go to our last clue, the Kleenex. <laughs> no call for cold. Do you think the Kleenex was in my basket? Because this story, even though it was kind of fun to read, it was kind of sad, wasn't it? That was a really bad day that Alexander had. It started bad and it ended bad. He lived to tell about it though. Well, sometimes we have days that seem kind of bad. Let's see. I wonder what kind of things can you imagine would make your day that terrible that you wanted to move to Australia or go someplace else or you just wish the day was over. I hope you don't have any days like that. I can't really remember a day that I had that was that bad. There were a few good things that happened. Oh, did you like Alexander? Did you like the book, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day? Did you like that book? It was a great book, and I loved sharing it with you. Uh, I have some activities, and if you want to see the activities that go with this book, then you can find them in part two, the video entitled Part Two, Alexander and a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Oh, it is so enjoyable spending time together while we read a picture book. I do hope you'll want to come back. Until then, see ya.